Okay, here's what I've done. I, I broke one, so and I've already scraped off all the paint, so I've got easy stick. I made these two exactly the same length. Put them all together at the bottom, and you cut them. And one of the things you have to look for, you put your rod through, it's flat. I want it to be able to go this way a little bit and this way, because if it binds like this and won't let this come over, it's not going to allow it to roll fully. I go up and down, I can go left and right with it. Anywhere past center is okay because it will spin freely. You got to do that on both of them. Uh, I made the bend come down this way and then this way and put these perfectly in line up here and here. Not to where they come up to the middle like this. Like this. Anyway, these are ready. Except for, I'm going to put a 90 degree bend on the bottom. And here's how we're going to measure that. This is going to be against the side. It's going to stick out a little. It's going to go like out to the side. It's not going to be straight up. It's going to go out to the side because I want an anchor against these. And these bends are going to go this way on this one. And on this one's going to go this way. Put it at the bottom of the can. Find out what direction. You're going to put your 90 degree bends and make them the same length. And then you'll have that part. And then, this is already dry by now. I can slide that piston in there. And she ought to act yeah, she's falling down there nice and slow. Oh yeah. I think she's going to work out just fine. We'll hook that and we'll be doing fine. Right here, I've got this one glued in place. Before I glued it in place, I uh, did the same thing that I'm fixing to show you on this one. You line it up with the piston and the displacer holes straight up and down to this point. This is the main point right here. And you stick this rod through and you want to make sure it goes to the left of center and to the right of center and up and down. Especially down. See I'm down lower than the other one. That's what counts. Before you glue it. But I'm not going to glue the second one because we need to put the uh, make the crank first and we need to get it in here and then after it's all installed then we can glue here down here, I'm sorry, right here, we need to glue here, and we need to glue here, and glue here. And before we do that, we're going to spin it, make sure it spins right, and doesn't bind. I'll be right back. We're going to bend the crank. I'll show you how to do that. Now, first, next thing we have to do for built, doing the crank, is you want to grab this nice and level with the top. Put your tape measure up on it pull it up I have one and one eighth inches which means um, I could go nine sixteenths on the crank but I think I'm gonna stick with a half inch just for a little bit of clearance you take the longest piece of coat hanger you got and you bend it you want to leave about that much right there for hooking your crank and putting your little bearings on each side also play for imperfections and then, from the, uh, from the edge of this, I want to go a half inch, put my pliers there, and I want to go 90 degrees. Now, when I bent this, you notice these are straight with each other. Make it perfect before you go on to your next step. Next step is to go ahead and grab it with your pliers. Make a measurement. And get as close to that half inch mark as you possibly can. I like measuring with the lines and not from the end because it's more accurate that way. That looks perfect right there, but except I want my pliers on the other side. I want to bend around everything. So let's set that up on the bottom there. That's a little bit too long. Uh, pinch it with my fingers and pull it through. I'm looking pretty good right there. Now that I got it, and I'm looking down it like this, I want to pull this piece straight to me, but most of the pressure is close to that as possible. If this doesn't wind up straight, then we'll just have to make it straight. 
And I'm going to do the same thing here. Let's get this square first. 90 degrees. Everything has to be 90 degrees. Forgive me for going out of the camera frame. I'm looking down the camera on most of this. Yeah, that's pretty straight with it. I think I can eyeball this. This is not rocket to science. There we go. And push straight away. I'm, I've got this end looking straight at me so I can view where I'm tipping this one down. And when I'm done, I want this to be in line with this one. I'm not quite straight with it. A little bit more. Come up a little bit. I'm not completely straight on that one going that way. A little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Now if we look down this, see that these look like a continuation and with a half inch in it next thing I'm going to do is measure the travel I want my piston to go look how nice and straight that's the way it needs hello to be. I'm Scott Brown with green wind and other home energies I've decided on three eighths of an inch for a three quarter inch stroke and that seemed to be the width of my pliers so I slide my pliers down to the bend and I'm line everything up again and I bend straight toward me with all the pressure right here and I think I'm gonna make it three-eighths of an inch for the width of the of the crank lobe it means I can use the pliers again that's straight and one more going the opposite direction and line it up Oop, too far there we go and she ought to spin nicely 90 degrees out of phase I got a little bit of a bend oh yeah that'll do wonderful right there slide these in this one can slide in like this I've got to uh, put the linkage into here first and all the little uh, bearings and stops that I'm going to put on and then I slide the other side in and we'll hook this thing up and see what she does. I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energy.